What's going on, duels? The Poke Rapper here, aka Tony Jackbots, aka Ryo on my new account. And this is going kind of funny because I made an alt to kind of fly under the radar and use a bunch of decks um, that I wanted to learn and just have fun with. And then my record started getting good. And then I said, I want to see how good I could get it. So I have been not using fun decks. I've kind of been going back and forth, and that's what this video is going to start off with, actually. Um, but yeah, so we're sitting right now at top 50 in the leaderboard, 104 and 23. It's a, like 81.8% win rate, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, might keep grinding, try to get the top, I don't know. What are we at? How many points is this? 40, 888, so about 900. We need like 300 points to get the top 10. That's kind of, that's a lot, right? So it is possible. I definitely think I could do it, but I just don't grind too, too much. Um, where have I been? I haven't been keeping tabs on any tournaments, really. Honestly, I'll watch like the RBT stuff the next day. I don't even know that they're happening. I've been so far removed, so I apologize um, I, I get so many nice comments and stuff on, on these videos saying that you guys want more content. So I don't normally do replay content, but I'm going to just throw a, a cavalcade of replays at you right now. Um, and starting with something I don't normally start with, the losses. So here's a deck that top aided. Uh, I think it was a Retos that top aided with this deck. And I saw this and I said... Man, do I love the card Salvage. Man, do I love Moria Greed. Y'all know me as the, the Diva Frog player, right? Shout out to Rodak, infinitely. Um, look at this nice deck, right? This should be good, and this should be just able to compete, in my mind, with Hero Frogs in terms of uh, the I need 50% Hero, I need 50% Water, and then Miracle Fusion just, like, seals the deal, right? This deck should do that very easily, so I thought it plays, look at this, King of the Swamp, this is a, a goofy-looking deck, but also any deck that can abuse uh, Absolute Zero is really sick. I really wanted to take out one of the traps for, like, a Wing Blaster or a Geki Break, I think, because you play Salvage, and Mally in so many cards that you could kind of be okay with putting in the graveyard that uh, a couple cards like that would be good but I'm not the best deck builder and I wanted to leave this in the hands of them uh, this card using an absolute zero sick sick idea barrier statue of the torrent um, real really cool really cool deck so let's go through I don't remember all these games so let's just go through as many as we can here we are rated matches here we go Benny King when the light has come ba -da -da -doo -doo, won't you stand stand by me yes I put a rap album out did I just sing like in someone that's never sang before yeah but what are you gonna do alright so here we go I'm going to hide their hand. Why am I playing Black Wings? This is not the video I wanted to show you guys. Maybe it's back here. Maybe it's. Did I use. Have I played so much Yu Gi Oh! that it's already back here? The water decks? Alright, we can't go through all the replays, and that's just insane. That's just insane. Here's the water. Alright, here's the water deck. Here's the water deck. Look at this wonderful hand. Look at, like, just the, the forced plays you have to do. Still somehow got Gilman back in my hand. No heroes in sight. Just salvaging. Okay, Raiko, perfect. They hit a plague. Nice. Do this as quickly as possible. I hold the bottomless for the Celestia. These people play so fast, they, they just do not... They don't wait for anything. All right, so waiting on a hero. Waiting on a hero. Hero to come to my hand. Cringe moments today. Apologize. Apologize. Look at this, dude. Divas. For, we're literally setting divas to get Aaron so that they could... Look at this shitty hand. This is insane. A single hero. The game is basically over, right? 
Hey, we got time. Nope, another diva. All right, we're chilling. Double poly, miracle salvage. That's good game to my opponent. Good game. Here we go. Run it back. Diva Gilman again. Let's run it, baby. Let's run it. This time we'll go for Android. They got the Honest. No problem. Could have set the Mirror Force. Hit the Wolf. No problem. Look at this. Look at this. Hit the Necro. That's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it. Could I have set Mirror Force right there behind the Android? Yeah, I guess, but then they probably just set Raikou right, and then I attack it, they could hit the... I don't know, yeah, I could've, I could've, but I don't think that makes up for this, right? We'll never know what that next card was, and, uh, alright, GG, so, perfect. And so now we're going against Goat Smurf. Oh, this kid played nice. This, I remember, this kid played nice. This kid got me. Got me real good. Alright, so we got some so we got some heroes. Looks like Vayu. Looks like Vayu being the key word. Stratos, always the boy. No traps, we don't like to see that, but we got more, right? So we're chillin'. Got cards we need. There's a nice trap. There's a little poly. Alright. I don't know how to play this deck 100%, so maybe we were like... I don't think we should put Absolute Zero on the field yet. It seems kind of minus. Hits me with an oppression. I'm thinking we could, uh... Yeah, try to summon Alias right after that, too. Ryko hits the back row. Very nice. Yeah, I'm playing aggressive. I see Miracle Fusion, but they have, uh... They have oppression, so that's hurting us pretty good. Alright, so look at this hand now in our monsters. And if we lose our monsters, then there's not much we could do, right? We have 1800 beater, Gale, perfect. Nothing to protect with. Royal oppression ruins our day. Top deck a nice e-call. They might have a single trap to stop this. They sure do. I can't really just pass, right? Because Gale's going to half us and mess us up anyway. Gores, not a good time for Gores. Because they still have Gale on the field. Luckily, 1350 is a little higher than Gale. Nice Miracle Fusion with the Oppression. And look at us just hanging on for dear life against a Royal Oppression. Nice Salvage top deck. Got me a couple useless cards right here. And I'm just like, alright, can we get him to pay like eight times and then win the game? Is that possible to do? Another Miracle Fusion. MST and Heavy Storm are just two cards. Just two cards. I get the zero out on the field. He lets it happen. Perfect, because it was a hamster. Don't worry, there's, there's better games coming. This is horrendous right perfect 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 time for future fusion perfect perfect let's go dude okay the sixth card had to have been gilman right no other way i should have said deep prison over the transporter i think we could we could all right we're, we're moving too fast to, to pause it and look at his hand and try to figure this out This was nice. This was nice because I saw he had a Raikou and a Necro Gardener, and I didn't attack, uh, hoping that he would flip the Raikou, which I thought was this, and I could chain and save my monster. So instead, I pass, and then he sets this, and I'm going to, like, I think to myself, I'll attack Necro Gardener, knock this, turns out he set the Raikou second, boom, lose my card, very important, now he has a Necro Gardener on the field, so... Looking at the graveyard, I probably didn't even have to knock this, but if he top decks Caius, that's pretty bad for us. Or if he has Caius, I don't remember. Crow and Sirocco. Alright, so, uh. The pro, so I knew I shouldn't have set the deep prison. This is where this kid really got me. I was like, with a goat player, you know they're setting, you know they're pro setting heavy. I don't need to set this. I did like a dummy, that's what I get. So, everything's going wrong, right? Boom, Royal Oppression again, perfect time. 
Perfect time for Reaper. I'm good. You got it. What else am I going to do? I'm just getting bodied. This deck is bodying me. Royal Oppression's bodying me. I'm getting outplayed. Every possible thing went wrong. So I never want to use this deck again. No, I'm just kidding. I I'll use it again, maybe, someday. But... Alright, so now we start compiling wins, and now we're just going to go right to uh, the most recent... Let's go through all these games. Let's go through all these games, starting with Ronnie Tsunami. Again, just going to show my own hand for the purpose of the reads. Sorry again for the cringe moments earlier on. I'm not going to cut them. I love hands like this. Um... I just love Legacy of Yada. It's just the best. It's just the best. You wanna come up? Um, so yeah, so I normally take some time to pretend that I don't know what I'm gonna do, and then I ultimately just set one or two, always being Legacy. Great card to draw. Would love to get that back row off the field. Not gonna do anything crazy. I'm gonna opt. I'm gonna play kind of goofy, but you're gonna see I'm gonna opt not to play Whirlwind. Um, I'm not going to give them any reason to Icarus. I want to kind of see what they have going on back here. It is Icarus. I, I don't know why it would let me see that. All right, now you got to go. Um, <laughs> if it's bottomless, then they have a Bora on the field, right? So we could still set Mirror Force. So we're we're kind of chilling, and uh, I don't want to waste my whirlwind like that. So just having all these good cards in my hand, I'm very okay with just putting Shura on the field. Testing the water, seeing if it's a deep prison, MST, bottomless, dust, you know, whatever the case, Icarus. Um, and if they happen to have Kalu, we have our own little Kalit to uh, to deal with that. And then we're still going to get Vayu. So get some life back with Android. Set bottomless for the Blizzard that's coming out, no problem. Goyo, bottomless, perfect. Another great card. All right, so now I'm playing a little aggressive, right? They didn't do anything to the summon last turn, which tells us, all right, we could put this on the field. Um, probably not Torrential. I could throw this on the field even, protect myself with Stardust. They didn't have anything to stop an attack. They would not let Ashura attack go through. I'm almost certain of that. So we could go big damage off the read. Trust your reads, trust your reads, trust your reads. Definitely not bottomless, definitely not D prison playing super aggressive here as black wings can do sometimes trust your reads stardust dragon set legacy set mirror force or maybe just set book in legacy maybe set the house maybe set the house so we went first we have seven to their six we're looking pretty good we're looking very good very very good obviously black wings could get around a lot of stuff with gale brain control big monsters stuff of the like there's a whirlwind there's gale i'm fine with that right because like not i could do anything anyway i could book it but he's just getting value so he's gonna try to swing over that he has dark arm but he can't do anything at top deck mind control like a savage so that was really really good game two love to see it all right now i look bad right because i just have a I'm going for it at that point. Dusts are probably coming in, but I'm going for it because, you know, being... All right, hold on. Let me pause. Let me pause this. If I... Man, for someone that's quiet, I'm running at the mouth right now, trying to keep this video under an hour long. Being able to get Bora Kalu would be okay. I didn't really have any back row, so I guess I could have just passed right there. That probably would have been the better play. And um, so I end up leaving Bora on the field. I take 2,000. Now my hand is just bonkers right this look at this like mind and brain the sirocco thing going on i got gale this is very close to game right if i go pump to four thousand or even put gale on the field and just read that's not an icarus attack um special summon gale use sirocco's effect pump to 53 mind control his sirocco use the effect again to give myself another 33 so this is like definitely game right if i put gale on the field and mind or brain control and then make uh gale and his sirocco to make stardust to protect against mirror force and then go for it but i think the first thing we have to do 
is actually mind control because if we put Gale on the field and then mind control, he Icarus attacks for a plus one, right? So, and we have Dark Arm too, which is <laughs> just, just, this is pretty nutty. His back row, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I don't remember what it is. The log is not what I meant to click on. Use the effect. That's step one. Mind control. Chains Icarus so we don't lose our Gale. Okay, no problem. He went first, went a minus one because he ran over our Bora. But we have Brain Gale, Dark Arm, so that's still getting us very close to game range. If we could top deck a monster, we're looking pretty good. Hopefully they don't set a back row. No clue why they did that. No clue. One back row. Cyber Dragon's looking nice. Try to bait out back row. Gonna brain control here. Could be Icarus again. Can't have the same thing happen. As long as that back row isn't... I mean, if we make Stardust with Dark Arm, right? That's three Darks in the grave, so that's 53, 67. So that's game, right? So we're going for it, hoping that... There's a Stardust. There's a Dark Arm. There's the MST, and we wrap it up. All right, so nice 2-0 with the Blackwing Mirror. Kind of hard to do sometimes. Uh, a, a tough, a tough mirror match. All right, so we're one game in, going against Poly G. 131. This was 731, so that's not bad. Um, this, I don't know. This probably isn't gonna be too great because it's a low, low one. But you gotta show all of them, right? So, I literally do not have to show all of them. Likes a logo. I like his logo. Brain right off the rip. Okay, frogs. Gonna be a rough one. Gonna be a rough one. Does not attack. Alright, whirlwind's just the best, right? put value in the grave nicely so we're loading up his hand but we're just putting on so much damage and i'm gonna actually uh not use dad's effect here because if i could just swing over it's only 100 extra damage i'd be getting and uh it's just not worth it right because now if he drops scores we could just pop pop we see here he doesn't have a fader i don't know if he would drop it anyway if he did but now we luckily get to keep value in the grave he's still in game shot range we have solemn he uh puts a lava golem on our side of the field i'll take my thousand damage he's definitely playing defensively now as i'm about to do i take my thousand but icarus attack is going to end the game barring he has battle fader which he does not okay i don't know if this is frog burn not a hundred percent take a shot i just set the deck to have you waiting waiting to be able to end the game. Wobs the boar attack. Really no need. And I make the armor master here. Tries to creature swap. I chain deck Devi. He chains DD Crow. I guess at this point we could show the hand, right? Because I have the knowledge. Ryza, Kaius, Kaius, Lava Golem. I'm like, alright, we're we're very, very safe. I don't know what that back row is, but we're safe. We have some. Another lava golem does very little. Damage, damage, damage. We know he has nothing. Soul exchange would be great if he top decks it. Top decks Econ. He sets it. He Econs the Dyna. Not 100% sure why. Okay, because he has double Econ. Not really necessary. Tree board and bad top deck with Fossil Dyna on the field. Can't bring him back. He's in a brain. I know all the cards in this hand, right? So I'm just in a Psalm and that's going to be game. Um... Pretty straightforward. Could have could have been dangerous against the first turn, uh, substitute stuff, but ends up not being anything super crazy. So on to the next one, because he had lava golems in his deck. Baby, you're biting me when you jump up here. I can't let you back on here. Ten years later is the name of my rap album. It's on Spotify. It's on my YouTube channel. It's everywhere. If you guys do want to listen to it and listen to me sing and mostly rap, um. Yeah, let's take a little intermission and talk about it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, it's weird because I released it like f four or five years ago now at this point, which is crazy to think. Uh, but yeah, my rap style is like very aggressive and braggadocious, which is weird because if I made music now, I'd really want it to be more like pop music because all I listen to is really K-pop twice. Um, 
And I don't know, yeah, I feel like I try very hard in real life to be, like, a humble person, but when it comes to rap music, it's, like, a very aggressive kind of thing to me, so that's the way, if you listen to my music, you're like, oh, that's who he is, like, it's very weird, like, that's not <laughs> kind of how I represent myself, but it's still, uh, how I rap, I guess, I'm very confident when it comes to that, even though I haven't rapped in a while, but yeah, 10 years later, Ryle Pop Golden, that's on, uh, every major streaming service, if you guys want to check it out, so here we go, one wonderful, wonderful hand here, um, how do we play this hand, I'm gonna show you guys right now, you play Black Whirlwind, you get a Kalit, you set Legacy, and that's it, because if they have Heavy Storm here now, if they have Heavy Storm here now, they're going to kill two cards, you're going to chain Legacy, you're going to have six cards to their five, right? If you set a Deep Prison or Icarus Attack, they're going to kill three cards, you're going to get one back, you're going to have five cards to their five. So, like, yeah, or you're going to draw one, so this is going to be gone, but you're going to have a card in your hand, so one, and then four, yeah. So it's just like, if they have a Heavy Storm, sure, Sirocco. That's fine, because look at the cards you have to out it, and Sirocco, and Legacy, you're just like, I don't even know what they're playing, I'm not gonna do anything crazy, this is very, very safe, and Kalu is always, they know we have it, but I feel protected right now, right, so, if they're MST, and they should get this off the field immediately, they actually go right for the back row, and that's just like, the best plus one feeling in the world, now we have seven cards to their five, that's we're up plus two, they set... I'm going to play aggressive now, right? If this is, you know, Torrential Goblin Zombie, then we still have six to their five when they draw. Uh, we could set Deep Prison if it's Reaper. If this is Ryko, Hamster, whatever the case, it is Turtle Dust Tornado. But they're going to dust. We have Kalu, so sure could swing over that. They're going to get a Zombie Master here, actually. I'm going to get that off the field. I'm going to swing for eight. I don't care about Gorgs because I have Icarus. I'm gonna let that go, no problem. I mean, they're just no back row, so now we can make Caddister nice, nice. Boom. I actually probably, if I special summon Bora right here, it's 35. It's not game, it's only 52, so I held off so I could keep Sirocco Bora in my hand. And we're chilling, right? Book of Life, Goblins, or a Zombie Master, Mizuki, Pyramid, so only summon the Diva. This one took me a little minute to think about, but I'm gonna Icarus. I'm actually gonna target both. Uh, divas, because if they Mizuki and bring out another Pyramid Turtle, then they have to attack before they could do anything crazy with Synchros. But they're not going to do any of that. They're actually just going to crash. They're going to get Reaper, but they don't have a back row, so Boar doesn't appear for game. They almost potentially brought it back, but we had to stop the Synchros before they could happen. So now, this is a hand that I love, um, but it's nerve-wracking because... I don't want to get Dust Tornado, and I remember this game very specifically because something wild is about to happen. Boom, I set three. Boom, 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 Dust Tornado. Wow, you hit the right one. Let's see what you would have won. Wow, an entire hand. A return Lightning Vortex would have hit a Mystic Tomato. The game would have been over a thousand percent. Plague Spreader goes to Grave. That just would have been so good. So now I get a minus one on a Mystic Tomato running over Sirocco. We had a 33% chance and he hit it. That's why I set three. What are you going to do? You take a shot sometimes. Better than Decree, I guess. So this isn't great. This isn't great. I mean, we're good, right? We're still good. That's not good. This is not good. Really would love for him to hit the Vayu. <laughs> would love for him to hit it, but if you're hitting 33s, you're definitely hitting 50 percenters, right? So I have to keep Vayu because I have... My boy Sirocco in the grave, if he's getting run over by a tomato, then at least I'm going to try to play the game out. But he has the Caius, so that's not going to happen. Everything has gone wrong for us this game, except for Legacy of Yadagarasu hitting us. The card that we need, the best card, and we're playing the game. We have no more targets. We're still in a bad spot. We have Royal Oppression, and that is enough to end the game. So, yeah. Couldn't put anything on the field. We just... That was very clean. That was a clean comeback after a terrible, terrible uh, sequence of events. So, that was K Kalos. Now we're playing Avatar T-Lab.
the replay buttons are purple showing that I've clicked on them so I really did not um, need to sit there and take all that time Avatar T Lab man what up good luck man y'all know what it is why am I showing both hands so alright so let's see what we got let's see what we got real quick Sad Icarus safe could set bottomless take a shot they're not gonna summon Lila they set a monster very popular this format they put multiple cards on the field next turn when I summon if they bottomless or deep prison I could chain Icarus I love doing that so Icarus always potential for a plus one there's two back row pusher on the field test in the waters they just take it they just take it so I'm gonna set a bunch of stuff did I have to set all that stuff well I guess solid makes it easy to set stuff right So I summon Trooper. This is potentially very bad for me. Um, because I'm going to Icarus. I'm going to hit the two back row, which I don't like to do. The monster's always a guarantee. So if one of them's MST, that's very minus. But I don't want to just go... Right, they're both Reckless Greeds. So now he has a lot of guards in his hand. Um, I don't want to let his Trooper run over my Shura for the guarantee plus one when I could hit the two back row and uh, make those a two for two potentially and then run over the Trooper next turn. Um, in no scenario here am I getting anything unless I Solemn the Trooper and that's still a one for one. So I figure let's clear the back row. Hope he doesn't MST. I'm going minus one anyway, so that's probably my best, my best shot. Isn't a foolish for Dandy. I'm going to space that back row. He's going to put Amy on the field. I'm going to bottom list the, the Amy. And now, I alright, so he's under Reckless for two turns, right? Just Lila. No more plants. Six cards, can't draw for two turns. So we have, we went first, I believe. Because we just set our Icarus attack. So we have four to his seven, but he can't draw for two turns. So it's really six to seven. Um, not including the token, so maybe it's like, you know, half a card apiece. Uh, I want to get all the cards off the field. Allure is tempting. Sirocco Boar is tempting. We Allure. We opt to get Shura off the field. I'm going for straight damage here, because I'm thinking... Maybe we shouldn't have allured right there, but we, we drew like two perfect cards, right? Because we removed Shura and now we set Mirror Force. So with Solemn Mirror Force, if he tries to swing, as long as his token stays on the field, we just win next turn. So Mirror Force was a great card to draw. Risky to do that. Could have just summoned that, did that anyway. But then we have to attack Trooper, right? Because I have to go like attack for 16, attack for 17 over that, and the 17 only puts them at another, like, I don't know, it'll be at 45, I think, so, 45 is still close, because we couldn't 40, or 37 over that, I took a shot, dude, what do you want me to do, so we're looking real pretty now, can't draw, so no Mark takes Soroko, I'm gonna saw him that, if he has another one, we're in trouble, he has DDR for Titanial, that's perfect, because we have Mirror Force, but he discarded Necro Gardena, he's gonna get that Mark of the Rose back, so now we're in a little bit of trouble, he takes that, just, I don't really know why, so I'm trying to get his cards off the field, and, uh, and I actually let my boar go to graveyard now, that just happened so fast, I got kind of confused, but yeah, so I, I bonk him for some damage, he gets my Sirocco, he does not use the effect to pump, 582 but you gotta know to use the effect he goes to attack and I'm like I'd rather have Sirocco on the field because I really can game him and then if worse comes to worse well I guess if worse comes to worse this leaves the field right for some reason but if I get it back and then the following turn I'm about to lose I could just Icarus um most likely so he sets a monster I draw a card that's not great for me but he does put another card on the field. So he goes to take it. I'm going to clear the field. I'm not in a great spot right here. I top deck mind control like a fiend when he sets a Raikou. That is an absolute crazy card to draw. And I took a shot taking it too. Because it could have been hamster or something bad. I killed 
The Raikou, he topped X Lone Fire, does not have a Titanial, which would have been game, so just goes for Dandy. I topped X Vayu. I think, I think, I think, I set it. He sets. <laughs> Morphing Jar. We draw a Deep Priz. He doesn't flip the Morphing Jar. He does not flip the Morphing Jar. He sets a Reckless Greed. Now I have Starlight Road. So I'm bringing this back. Armed Wing goes up to 28 when it attacks. 28 minus 3. Very convenient. 25, that's what I'm going for. I'm flipping this into attack mode. If it's Mirror Force, then I'm Starlight Roading. Did not flip Morphing Jar. Very, very confused as to why. But we'll take it. Alright, so Gores is gone. Double Whirlwind. Good cards to see. I set one. He's in a card destruction. Okay, all my whirlwinds are gone. Necro hits grave. Ami hits grave. Plants hit grave. He has a titanial. Alright, so we're looking pretty bad. We're looking pretty bad right now. Another Ami brings out two of them. But we're fine, right? We're fine. We're chilling. We're going for it. If he has if this is something that's gonna <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. These people side deck. If this is something to stop me, then we're losing the game anyway, right? So, I could Black Rose right here and take my 16. I could try to force the Necro. I could see what this is. I'm going to go for 17 damage first. I'll take my 8. I'm going to get that off the field. I'll take another 8. I'm going to half that to see if I could force it. And we do force it. So now, look where we're at. We clear the field so that we could Gale half the Titanial. He's forced to negate it, right? Could have negated either of those attacks with Necro Gardner. Again, not sure why. A couple of these games are gifts. You're going to get them sometimes if you play your best against people that don't play their best. You're going to get some wins. Um, he went first. He has three to hour four. So now we're up. He has a Necro in the grave and one plant monster. I love having Legacy set. We have Kalut to protect Bora. We're looking pretty good. He sets everything. That tells me it's probably Morphing Jar, right? Not just the stats this time, but when you're setting all your cards like that. So, first things first, we want to make sure. Then we're going to put Kayla on the field. And I don't feel great about flipping the Morphing Jar, because he's getting five new cards, too. And I had to summon Kalut, which I really did not want to do. But I couldn't hold it, right, and let it go to waste. Maybe I could have. I don't know. Alright, so here he goes, taking off. He's in a heavy storm. We're playing a bunch of cards. He's chaining. He's fiend comedian. He's going to remove all the cards from my grave. He's got burial. He didn't Amaryllis last turn in his end phase. Okay, mark my bore. He's bringing stuff back. He's milling cards. But this has to be something that could stop an attack. And, uh... I think we just top deck the second boar, which is so ridiculous because if it's torrential, we lose, right? Because then when these hit the graveyard, I'm taking 16. But you got to take a shot. Look at my hand. It's all monsters. So I'm thinking we Bryo. We put this. First, we put Bora on the field while we still can with Blizzard. Then we Bryo. We put this back. Bora still has the Necro Gardener. So how do we win this turn? Ooh, the old Yu Gi Oh! video game tests. How do you win this turn? Well, 17 over this. Well, he can negate one, but then Bryo still attacks this for 16, 16, and 17. He only has one negate, right? So that should be game. Boom, boom. And he just quit. I think I only had Kalut to bring back, so I couldn't make Bryo. I couldn't make Bryo because he fiend comedian. Wow, the big brain stuff. So what would I have done? I think it's still game, right? I mean, we just go for game and don't care about this. I guess that's the play because we're losing next turn anyway. So we make a 5. Probably Android. Bora attack this for 17. He negates. Bora attack this for 17. He goes through. I take. I'm at 5. He's at 11. Android attack this for 17. 17, 17. That's a game. Alright. So Amarill's deck got through. Love losing connection. Alright, we're rolling here. We're rolling here. We're definitely 
only at 20 minutes. Boom. I've played this kid multiple times. He always gets upset when you beat him. Which is unfortunate because he starts off so strong with the good luck, half fun. He goes back to rock. The paper will dominate in this fashion. Alright, so let's see what we got. I love drawing Starlight Road as a six card. I'm actually going to set three. Normally I just set two in this scenario. But Icarus is going to do me pretty good to clear up the field. Deep Prison is going to be okay. And this is a weird one because I'd love to let the attack go through. But then I can't Icarus his cards and Shuro run over. So I think I actually Deep Prison this attack, which is kind of goofy. There's a nice card to see when your opponent has no cards on the field. I'm going to get Bora because we're super safe with this, right? Unless he just MSTs it. We have Icarus for his gores. We're just, we're good. And now we have the ultimate fuel, right? We haven't been able to do this too, too much. So it seems, go for 8 first, then 18. Gold Sark, that's fine by me. Junk over that, that's fine by me. I'm putting cards on the field. I'm going for it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Starlight Road lets you go for it, baby. Cross border, great card. You know me, I'm a patient boy. Gotta be careful of Dark Arm now. Gotta be careful of Dark Arm. They gotta dust the new one. It was Dust Shoe. Fantastic. Alright, so now we're playing the game, right? We gotta be a little careful here, but if we could do everything we gotta do. Alright, so here's the thing. I dusted and I opted to set Solemn with the Dust Tornado effect. I could have set Deck Devi and then went Kalu attack, Kalu over it in Deck Devi, but I set Solemn thinking that that would be the most important card to set because it stops anything. His end phase. He decrees. Solemn ended up being the right set. Game changer. Game changer. We have Road. We have Oppression. Kai's is obviously the killer, right? Here he puts Armageddon Knight in the graveyard. I Solemn Judgment at a Royal Decree. Armageddon Knight is in the graveyard. I'm not sure why. He has three darks. Now, okay, sure, Armageddon Knight's in the graveyard. Royal Oppression. Draw some cards. Sets the cards at the back row. This is kind of goofy of me. No, it wasn't. I have oppression. Never mind. This is fine. I can't do anything now, and we're going to lose the game. So, what are you going to do? You let Armageddon Knight go to the graveyard? Or, no, nah, I don't think the game state is changing that much. But <laughs> it was silly that that happened. Sure, a dust shoe. Boom. Show to hand. What? Always a tough one, because this card's crazy, but you need to control no monsters. Um, so if he's going to summon Armageddon Knight, send Cross Porter and add, um, a Neo Spatian to his hand, then he can't play this card just yet because he has a monster on the field. So I think about this one for a little bit, ultimately put the Raikou back. He's going to Armageddon Knight, the Cross Porter, get the Dark Panther. So he's got a pretty good hand. He's got a pretty good hand. I draw. <laughs> Dude, what's up, man? We're playing the game today. Top deck, the f fattest, fucking nicest MST you could possibly imagine. Knowing your opponent's hand, knowing they're not going to chain. They do have brain control. Shout out to Ludo, one of the goats. Make a safe android here. And draw some cards. Drew some damn good cards, too. Setting a lot of stuff. I don't know he has Dark Creator. I can't show you this hand anymore. I don't know any of these cards. Just an attack. He lets it go through. He gets Grand Mole. Happy to see the Grand Mole because we have uh, a lot of stuff that could stop that. Set books at Deep Prison. There's the Grand Mole. It's not a dark, so I'm okay with putting it in the grave. I remember this game. Yeah. All right. So he drops Star Creator. He gets Armageddon Knight, he sends Plague. Now I'm like, alright, I'm in a pretty tough spot. I'm in a pretty tough spot, right? I can brain and tribute this, get this off the field. I think that's the play, right? He's gonna Solemn. 
He's gonna solemn that brain control. He said, no, sir. Okay. Attack the Arm Knight. He mirror forces. Alright, so now put Soroko on the field. Little pressure. Why do I put Soroko on the field? There's definitely a reason for that. Because oh, I have Ayu in Grave. Okay. Yeah, we're not setting it. We have Book for any Black Rose play. Alright, so we're chilling. Yeah, we have Legacy. Alright, we're chilling. So right here, that's the game ender, right? And Ludo, Ludo left when that happened, too. He thinks about what to do, and he does nothing. I drew the, I mean, the best two possible cards, right, in that scenario for my turn and with Legacy. So, the game is over now. He doesn't have Necro in the grave, just Plague Spreader. But he had a bunch of options. Um, he has Brain Control. Can't do anything with this. He could use Star Creator. I don't know. There's stuff he could do, but I guess he doesn't want to lose to Oppression. He doesn't want to lose to Icarus Attack, so he literally just doesn't do anything. So many options with that, but... Soroko Pump, 3751 minus 12 is 39. He's at 34. And then he's going to talk a little shit at that end, because I say good game, and he's like, no, bad game. And I'm just like, man, shut up. Just say good game when you lose, like when you win or lose. They say, that's the quote I wanted to remember. Uh, when you lose, say little, and when you win, say less. And I like that. Alright, so we only got a hot six more to go. This is against 531. So, you know, a capable player. No good luck, no have fun. I'm past it, honestly, at this point, guys. I'm at the point now where I'm just like, don't say it. I, 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 I'm coming for your head, either way. Super aggressive. Super aggressive turn one. I'm like, alright, that might be deck heavy, But I'm going to test the waters here and try to clear this whole field. I'm going to put Shura on the field. If not, if that's bottomless or deep prison, I'm sat in some back rows. I feel protected. Perfect. He went first. He has three to my five. That is a, a wonderful plus two. Now we're in a pretty good spot. Just that bottomless. He could have set Raikou there, which would have hurt me a little bit. But, you know, now we have decisions to make because we're worried about cores a little bit. But I'm okay with poking for eight, putting that on the field. He does drop the gores there, which I find kind of goofy. And now I am worried about heavy. Did not have to set another one, but, again... I did not have to attack for 800. I didn't have to put value on the field. And then after I didn't, I got punished by the gores. I felt the need to protect myself by putting deep prison on the field. So if he attacks like this, I could deep prison it. I get heavied. I get punished again. So, so okay, he puts a sure on the field. So I'm like, this is not. This is the hybrid deck. This is not value turbo. So what started as a really good plus two for us is now gotten minus one off the heavy. We're going pretty minus. I am going to Kalu over this. If he has one, then he has one. But I don't want him to go even more plus because he has Armed Wing in the Grave, another Vayu, plus sinking with the 800 token. It would just be really, really bad. So uh, we keep ourselves alive here. He does have a back row. Icarus, amazing card to draw. We're drawing very good cards. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm going to set both heavies gone. He's in a Blizz. And I'm just like, thinking, thinking. I'm going to let him synchro. I'm going to get both monsters off the field. And now we're playing the game again, right? So now, he went first. He has three to hour four. We're poking. Always love to see legacy. Makes the opponent even more scared. There's a Bora. I'm going to book the Bora. Just go for a swing here. He's in a mirror force. I feel good here. I still feel fine here. Forces the Icarus attack out. Gives me a nice plus. How are we getting through this? What is that back row? That is the question. He's going to sink for Goyo. I have Solemn. Mind control. We got to play kind of cute to get out of this one, right? Hopefully he doesn't draw a monster. Let's see what he has. He has a Kalu. Could have put it on the field in one. Doesn't want to overcommit like a smart player, but... Sometimes when you play aggressively, that wins you the game. So, now I know if I could just get something, I'm in a pretty good spot here. 
I think about it, I pretend like I have something to do, I don't. I have to set my Sirocco. He summons Blizzard, and I have to summon the Blizzard, I think, right? Sure do, sure do. He takes the Sirocco. He takes the Sirocco. Now, we're not in a good spot. I have to go. What is this card? That is the question. What is that card? Only one way to find out. We gotta find out, right? He's thinking. We're trying to figure out what that could mean. It is Torrential Tribute. I'm pretty sure he just summons Kalu here and wins. Yes, he does. Alright, so... Rough game to lose when you're up so much. Heavy Storm, the Equalizer, attacking into Gores. What do I say in all my videos? Do not attack into Gores if you can't protect yourself. If you have to overcommit to the field to protect yourself, then don't attack. <laughs> you know, like, because then you just get punished and look what happens. So now we're down game one. We should have been up game one. We draw pretty mid. This play I absolutely hate. This is a, such a force to put a value in your hand. You're wasting your blizzard. Um, I guess in this, um, whatever you want to call it, hybrid deck, having value in the hand is like a little bit better. But to me, I'm just like, that's ass. So, take my 13. We draw Whirlwind. Clue over the blizzard because we have a blizzard to get the Caleb back, so we do want something in the graveyard. I'm not going to do anything here, because I want... I don't want to force, uh, you know, an Icarus attack or anything, go even more minus. So he's loaded up on back row. Now we have decisions to make. We could start trying to figure out, piecing, piecing together what he has. So let's see what he has. This is pretty aggressive, right? I mean, Blizzard's going to get us a summon that's going to go plus over a monster, potentially, right? We could... We're testing the waters when we make plays like this. We play Black World when we summon Shura. Bottomless... Okay, that sucks. What are you going to do? Icarus, D Prison, Royal Oppression, Starlight Road. This is game two. Most of the time, Starlight Road's going to be sided in, right? I'm taking a shot here. If it does go through... If it's Dust Tornado, that's fine, right? I still have... 1800 attack, if he top decks Sirocco, or well, he has Dark Arm in hand, if he top decks Sirocco or has Sirocco in hand, then I don't know. Then we have a decision to make probably Solomon, and if he has Solom 2, then that sucks. But if he, you know, if it's Shura, if it's any monster, we kind of have to Solom. Otherwise, we have to deprison, and then he could chain Icarus and kill everything. We're just, the mirror match is tough. The mirror match is tough. We all know that. I'm going to go for Bora. I'm even going to take it one step further here and attack. And he mirror forces. I'm completely fine with that. Because I know that my summons are going through. So he instantly DD Crows the value. And that tells me that he has Dark Arm. I'm going to Solemn that. He's going to Solemn me back. And now I'm actually like very happy that he did that. Because I know he doesn't have any monsters left. He's going to get Whirlwind off the field. He's going to get this off the field. He doesn't have anything in mind control, knowing that his Solemn is gone is just the best. So he chains Deck Devi, actually. So I thought I was safe. I'm not safe. He has Whirlwind. I'm seeing the end game here. If he top decks Sirocco, then that's unfortunate for me. But he knows all of our cards, and he knows... I don't know. What am I waiting for, right? You got to go for it. So right here, he could top deck something. Top deck scores... Again, Gore's in this deck. I don't know. He has Black Whirlwind on the field now. It's no good. Is this Starlight Road? We could take a peek at it. It sure is. My top deck Mirror Force. That's one of the best cards we could draw in this scenario, right? So, did have Solomon and Starlight Road. And then he's just going to draw, and that's going to be it. So, I thought Mind Control was the game. Deck Devi was brutal, but we still end up getting through it. Wonderful hand game three, as long as nothing crazy happens. So, that's a bunch of stuff. Double Legacy is so, so good. Um, I'm just like, what? Did, what? And he's just like, can't summon it. Alright, sure, can't summon it. Is he lying to me? Was that nothing or was it actually Sirocco? It is Sirocco. It is Sirocco. Right, look, look at this for a minute. Let's let's just look at this. Starlight Road, Compulse, Deep Prison, Heavy Storm, Blizzard, Sirocco. There is no Deck Devi, so I was like, alright, yes, Sirocco, Deck Devi. He literally set 
Soroko turn one. For what, I don't know. He set all of these back rows with Heavy Storm in his hand. I don't know. I think turn one here with a hand like this, you might just set heavy and pass, right? And then when I do stuff, I mean, he's still going to go minus, right? Because he's going he's gonna to kill the whirlwind, which is fine. I'm going to draw some cards, and then he could set the house. But, yeah, when you have a hand like this, I, I, I don't know. I think that's just played kind of funny. Um, so, how am I going to play this? I guess this is a little silly, but I have Deep Risen, so if he dusts, then I'm stuck with a clue on the field, knowing that he has Sirogo because of the mistake that he just made. Um, but if I summon Shura, I feel like there's a higher chance that I'm getting bottomless. Um, it's like just losing to MST Double Dust or lose to bottomless MST Double Dust. So it's like... Yeah. I'd rather save the Shura. I do want to try with the Whirlwind here. I guess I don't have to do anything. I could just, like, set Double Legacy. Um, I don't know. There, you know, there, there's an argument for a lot of different plays here, honestly. And, uh... You gotta test the water sometimes. You know, you gotta take some shots and try to feel out what your opponent has without putting too many of your best cards on the field. Of course, sure, a Kalu would be amazing, but if it gets bottomless, we're still in a fine spot, but... That's tough. Because then it's probably going to get deep risen, but you get the boar, but if it gets bottomless, then you just have a Kalu, which is still fine, but I'm testing the waters now, putting Kalu on the field to see, because deep risen can protect the attack. And then if he does chain Icarus, we could chain double legacy. So we're like not... Then we still have Clue on the field, which is kind of bad. So this is a weird scenario. I took a shot. I'm taking shots. He lets it go through. I get Gale. Okay, nice. So now I'm thinking he has Deck Devi. Also thinking that he has Deck Devi because he set Sirocco turn one unless he's taking me for a ride. I do want to get the smaller monsters out of my hand as quickly as possible. So that's another reason why I put Clue on the field. I even put Gale on the field. And going off the that and also not wanting to lose to Bottomless, I'm okay with just losing to Mirror Force here because the Gale was free, right? So I'm just going to punch. I'm just going to punch for some damage. Takes both. Here I'm okay with this getting bottomless. Because I don't want to get Deck Devi now, knowing that he could just summon Sirocco and do that. So, uh, yeah, he's got heavy. I have double legacy. I feel pretty good here. Um, he's going to summon Sirocco. He's going to pump. He's at 43. I'm going to deep prison. He's going to compulse the Sirocco back to his hand. He's going to set one more. I'm going to summon Shura. He let the Kalu go through. I'm like, alright, if he bottomless is here, he didn't bottomless this, maybe because he's holding the Sirocco, but we'll see if he bottomless is the Shura. Um, he doesn't. And then knowing that he has Sirocco, we can't summon if it's Torrential. Uh, I put the Shura on the field. It gets Solemned, which is insane, and I'm like, alright, now, you know, he's so low, I, if I just get a Kalu, then we win. And I Legacy on the first one. Uh, hit the Kalu, actually. I Legacy on the second one to make it seem like I didn't hit a Kalu, and I'm just like, give a quick hand shuffle. I, I already summoned, you solemned it, so I gotta just attack. And uh, I do have the Kalu. He lets the attack go through, if I'm not mistaken. Drop the Kalu, and we steal that one. So, yes, I side out my Icarus attacks. Um, almost three of them. Almost all the time. Uh... This is the reason. Uh, I know this card's coming in. This did nothing for him. This lets me test the water a little bit more. He feels super safe when he has this. Didn't even deprison. Could have deprisoned right there and stayed in the game. Then he could have uh, drawn whatever and... I don't know. Summon Blizzard and attack or... I don't know. Yeah, he could have. He could have stopped that, but... What are you going to do? Good game, good game. Somehow we're still connected. Now we're playing against 427 Arlick. Getting a nice array of different matches. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, for all the support and the kind words. Always, I appreciate them. Sorry I'm running off at the mouth a lot. Um, if you see anything with the plays that you like, that you don't like, please, by any means, tell me how, you know, what you think I could have done differently. Tell me how you would have played it. 
I love the game and I love feedback and, and just bouncing thought ideas off of other people. So thank you very, very much for watching as always. All right, so right off the rip, we have a hand where he charged. I'm like, this is, you know, either quick draw or now Amaryllis. I love Shura. Go Shura. If this is Hamster, then we can Kalu over it and then kill the Raikou, Raikou with Vayu. Um, we could go for big damage. There are many options with this hand and Vayu's out of the game. Um... If we do Sirocco Bora and it's Hamster or Raikou and they have Caius and that's like really bad for us. Um, but we put it on the field. We're like, he charged for the Raikou. He could be cheeky, but we're going to take a shot. He hits a dandy. Hits a shell. Hits a quick draw. All right. So, again. Oh, okay. My, my mouse is dead. Okay. Things are happening. Things are happening. Haha, <laughs> don't worry, everything's fine. The game's happening in a fine state, everything's fine. I'm playing, he's shelling, where uh, cards are happening, and Pot of Avarice, and I have nothing to stop it. Sometimes I lose going, or I lose game one against Quick Draw, and then, uh. Oh, he torrentials that? Okay. Yeah, sometimes I lose against Quick Draw game one, but Deck Devi is so brutal games two and three that most of the time it's a great matchup. Uh, so I'm super behind here. Thanks for telling me that my mouse battery was low. This thing is just not working right now. I would love to give you guys some better commentary. It's dead. It's dead. The video is dead. No, just kidding. Look at the look at everything that's happening. Look at the plays. Wow, this is crazy. This is so crazy. Wow. We take game one. I'm pretty sure something is going to happen either that game or this game where my, I like, we'll see, we'll see. We'll, we'll, when we get there, if <laughs> if my computer isn't broken. Would love to get rid of that back row, but we can't. He solemns that, we're tight. So now I'm about to lose next turn. This is the play. I chain book to the Kai's. Titanial could negate that because it targets one card on the field, but I didn't think he knew that. So I tried targeting the Kai's. It uh, worked, and because of that, he's at 4,000. We could pump that up, and that is actually... Oh, I can't pump it up, I'm sorry, because uh, if I target one card on the field, he can negate with Titanial. So, I don't think he knows that anyway, but we have enough Boras and whatnot to... Uh, hey, we're back, we're back. What happened game one? I don't remember. It was pretty wild. It went back and forth. I don't know how we kind of got our way out of that, um... But you guys know, right? Yeah, Tony, Tony Tone, right? That's the boy, you know, who was just pulling him out. So, all right, now Dice Pod. And that's kind of a freebie, too, because my, I mean, that definitely should have went to game three. My opponent did not know that he could, um, he did, doesn't know how Titania works, right? And that's, like, one of the best cards. So, he solves my sure he should have won the next turn. I had a big monster hand, but he didn't. So, here's one of the best. Here is one of the absolute best. I love Legacy of Yada so much, and you have Heavy Storm and Clear the Way. So I think about it, hmm, what am I going to do? I'll just set one. That seems safe. Force out one of the strongest cards in the game right here. Sometimes you're going to get games like this where it just works so well. And we're playing. I remember this game. Gets a Bubble Man. Where have I seen this deck before? King of the Swamp. Polly. Wow. Must be nice to draw those cards you know what fuck that deck that deck sucks i'm just no i'm just kidding it doesn't suck he has a solemn two nice we're looking okay very protected nice book of moon we went first we have six to three that's a nice plus one so now we have four to three but just gonna go 13 here and then make cat he's an amore i'm like whoa 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 can you just hold your horses a second he just goes more he starts slamming the cards i'm like please wait for a response shuffles i'm thinking he's like more i'm like i'm gonna solemn that king of the swamp poly removes malleus he's got a pretty good play going on here it's in a poly he's gonna make zero but we're still looking pretty good 
nice Royal Prussian feel very protected here heavy storm is gone tree morning is in a salvage I'm like can you no I didn't say can you wait for a response I didn't do anything this isn't a miracle yeah so basically that's where it happened not when he did the salvage he doesn't go through his phases. I'm like, main phase one, he's like, salvage, adds two cards back to his hand. I'm like, please stop and wait for responses. And he's just like, okay, no problem, no problem. I'm just like, put the cards back and wait for me to respond. Like, that is not how you play the game, you know, and he quit. So, I don't know what's wrong with these people. It's so aggravating, honestly, when people just come on here and play however they want. And then they talk shit when they lose and they think that they're, like, so good. Just I try to be humble and I try to be nice, but these players just play, like, mad annoying sometimes. And it, it I don't know. There's games like this where the players don't know what their cards do and it's a gift. And down here, wherever, somewhere. But then there's games like that where they just don't play appropriately. Obviously, games where they don't say good luck, have fun. People don't take it that seriously. It is what it is. I mean, I take it very seriously, but I know I'm going to win. I know I'm going to lose. Like, it, it, I'm just going to play because I, I don't know I'm going to win. I could lose all of them, but I I know I'm, if I'm going to play that, I don't know, I'm going to try my best and uh, try to do everything properly. So, the more seriously you are about the game, knowing what your cards do, playing properly, it, it just... It's more professional. It's just easier for everyone that you're interacting with. It's easier for your opponent. It just it's better all the way around, I think. So, who we got next? Who we got next? We're, we're nearing the end here of this streak. Feather Duster 771, pretty respectable. Hope you guys enjoy Blackwing content. I like this. I like taking my time and going, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Really only worried about Lila here, but we see an alias. That's fine. That's fine. Doesn't tell us what the deck is yet. Could be a few different things. Dust shoot, we're going to get there for sure. Alright, so we're playing against Diva Hero. We're going to put that Diva back, and now he doesn't really have... Uh, anything with Dark Arm. This is still a scary hand, right? It's still a scary hand, but we have Oppression. We're looking really good with Icarus. Um, I put that Diva back. No, I'm doing anything crazy. He doesn't try to force the mind control. Gonna Icarus. Just hit a bottomless. So now, you know, it's 5-5. Five, five. I have my road. I have Oppression. You know, he has mind. We're in a pretty good spot. We just have to get what we need, right? So, I shouldn't show you what he draws, but you're going to see in a sec anyway. I don't normally bottomless Stratos. I don't like doing that, but I don't really have a good out to this card right now. So, I'm going to bottomless it and just not take any damage. I decide to put Gale on the field and start swinging. We have Icarus attack. He's in a heavy. That's perfect, perfect time to see it. But, unfortunately for us... He does have mind control. Um, I was hoping... We knew that he had mind control. I was hoping that he would try to special the Infernal Prodigy. But he actually plays this quite well. And just uh, mind controls the Gale. And then normal summons the Infernal Prodigy. So... I pretend I have something to stop that. I do not. He makes Android... He could have attacked first. Or no, it was mind control. He couldn't have attacked. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Makes Android, I have Oppression, so now we know his hand, right? It's Plague Spreader, Dark Arm Dragon, and Compulsory Evacuation Device. So we're actually chilling okay right now. Sets the Compulse, I draw a nice Bottomless, that's good. Heavy's gone, he sends that back, I set Bottomless, he sets a monster, I assume it's the Plague Spreader. It is, I swing, now we're looking pretty good. We still have Icarus for a Gores, should he top deck one? Didn't drop it then is going to drop it here, so he must have drawn it right there, and he does have Kaya, so we know that he still has just Dark Arm in his hand, and he ends up drawing Mizuki in return. Um, he's going to Kaya's target the Oppression, and I have Kalut for this, so I'm still pretty safe here. He has two Darks in Grave. He can't stack for Plague in Synchro with this, so he wants Oppression off the field, I am going to bottomless. If I Icarus, then I put four in his grave. He stacks for plague. He has dark arm. Oppression is gone. And then I guess I bottomless the dark arm, but he could still hit something else. 
even though we're we're looking pretty good. I feel pretty good about this spot. Um, yeah, if he dark arms this, then we chain it and kill it. If he dark arms this, then we chain both. I guess we're still fine. I guess we're actually still fine. Um, but I'm looking at this as like, let's see how I looked at it actually. I bought him with that. He turns that to attack mode. Kalit saves the day. He drops the dark arm. He gets rid of the Sirocco. I say that's fine. I could have chained Icarus attack and went pop uh, this card and this card and then chain this card. But I just want to brain control this and win, right? So we see the, the finish line here. I do put the third dark in his grave by colluding over it. But I feel fine. He's going to try to clear out everything. I'm going to draw a card here with this legacy. It is Shura. So, brain control, hopefully it's not anything crazy. I go to pop it. He chains. And I look at my grave. I think about this for a minute because I'm like, how do I win? But it turns out if I kill three of the cards with Dark Arm Dragon and Shura ended up being the best possible top deck. Dark Arm runs over one of the cards. Shura runs over the fifth monster. Shura gets me a Kalu and that's going to actually do it. And I realize that unless he has Battle Fader, but I'm like, he definitely does not have Battle Fader, so. Alright, so we take game one very nicely, very close game. Good Caius on his part. Good Gores Caius. I'm going to take a shot with the MST. I feel good here because I have Bottomless, I have Kalut. I feel pretty safe. Bottomless that right away. Putting, putting damage on the field. Check my opponent here. I ask him for Pryo on Zombie Master because it is cost and it does have to be on the field to resolve. So he can go minus one potentially there. But this player knows his stuff and he says no, no priority. So I just bought him. Let's get it off the field. Applying pressure here, trying to. I do want value in the grave, right? It's not doing me a ton on the field. If it's torrential, it's torrential. I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take the minus. So he pays half right here to bring back Zombie Master. He's going to pitch Mally to bring back Goblin Zombie. And there's no follow-up after that. Um, I'm not really I'm not really sure why. I think this is like almost game, right? If we... I don't want to try to go through the zombie line here, but if you return... Jeez, yeah, this is busted. Zombie Master, pitch Mally to bring back Goblin Zombie. Normal Summon Plague Spreader Zombie... Uh, make a Bryo. You could even remove Mally. This has to be a monster, right? Yeah, so I guess he can't Book of Life. But he has C Def and Wing Blast. I mean, he has like crazy, crazy lines he could do right here. Crazy lines. Pr Plague sp Prague Spreader. <laughs> My voice just like did some weird frog thing. The frogs are trying to come back. Stop playing the Black Wings. I don't know what he's thinking here. He's just does not do any of that stuff. Uh, maybe I'm wrong for thinking that, but I'm like, you pretty are pretty much close to game. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I'm not letting this attack go through until you put your Zombie Master in the graveyard. He does, boom, I'll take the damage, no problem. I mill a card. It's Shura. He Book of Lives the Shura, which is fine. And uh, he's at 1125. Still did nothing with the Mally and the play. Am I missing something? Like, he went return, right? Like, he did normal summon? He did not normal summon that turn. I had no back rows. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I summon Blizzard. I bring back young Kalit. I'm going to synchro right here for young Mistworm. Here's a play. I don't make that much, but I do love it. 11.25, just like game one. I see the finish line because of brain control. Mistworm, as long as I put these two cards back. If I try to put all three back and this card is something to stop my Mistworm, then I can't win this turn. But if I put just these two back and this card is something to stop my Mistworm, then I could brain control and attack. So he puts all the cards back in his hand. I say, no, 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 just the back row and the Goblin Zombie, and that's going to be it. No good game. What are you going to do? What the hell are you going to do? All right. 600. Baki. Boki. Baki, craziest anime of all time. Just kidding. Um, goofy fucking anime. But very funny. 
Two more and we're done, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this hand now. I don't want you to see his hand, but it's too late. I forgot to do it. I take my time. Look at this. Look at this in real time. Hmm, what am I... Alright, it's not real time because I've hit next play a million times. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I do get punished by Raiko here. Take a shot. Young dupe. No problem. Summons another dupe. Sets a back row. I wait here because I'm like, if he puts anything on the field, hopefully Swamp Frog is what I was anticipating and hoping for actually he didn't do it early on so I was like alright maybe he'll draw one soon I can chain Icarus and as dupe frog effects work um it has to be the last thing to resolve right so activate swap frog chain Icarus attack these two go to the grave then swap frog happens these two don't activate um so I went first I have six to his six except he has treeborn in the grave which is uh one of my worst nightmares, right? So I'm like, alright, we're not out of the woods. Let's start putting some pressure on. Blizzard, Bora, Treacherous, the one trap in his deck. Perfect for me, no problem. Pressure, 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 pressure. We could Goyo Gores if he drops on the Stardust. I'm gonna be a good boy. I'm not gonna do it. I have Book, I have Bottomless. His Heavy's not gone, but he's in a pretty tight spot now. Treeborn comes back. He thinks what to do. Let's think. Let's try to figure out what he's thinking about. Okay, so he's got cards. He's got a quick draw dandy Lila. Puts the Lila on the field. I guess right here I could have just negated it with Stardust, right? That would have been okay. And I have Solemn and Book. Dude, Book of Moon at one is just the best card. I think I could have just negated that with Stardust. I think about this for a minute. I'm like, I'm going to book the quick draw. I don't think he has anything else he could do. I'm just like, man, you summon Lila already. Get that out of here. Clear the board. Take his Treeborn Frog. I know there's not really anything he could do if I take his Treeborn Frog. Because um, I have Solemn set. Uh... We were, in, we were in a really good spot. I think we had Heavy Storm set, too. All right, so that was a good, solid game one. The frog always ends up with the boy. Believe that. I don't want to show you his hand. But, pause. I guess I will. Did open Titanial. This is the worst card ever of all time. People play this card, and they will put it on the field, and it will cause many problems for many players, including myself. But those players will draw this card, and now you have to loan fire Dandy turn one, which isn't the worst. No, 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 it isn't the worst, but it's uh, in your hand endlessly, which sucks. So now I'm thinking to myself here, I could, this is tough, right? I could summon Fossil Dyna, attack, boom, we look like a stud. If I do that, I don't have a Deep Prisoner or Bottomless. I have Oppression, which Dyna's already taken care of. I have a Solemn. If he has Heavy, I don't want to Solemn it. If he has a monster that can get over this, like a Lila, I don't want to Solemn it. It's, it's not great. I have two amazing options here. But because we have Dark Arm, I think the best sequence to go with this is Whirlwind Sirocco. And it took me like a minute to think about this because I could Bora, but I don't want to leave anything on the field. Not knowing his hand, he signed in Mobius, that's dope. Does have Brain Control, so Brain Mobius would have been like catastrophic. Um, I think the best play is the play I end up making here, and it's to make sure he doesn't have any monsters left on the field. He does have brain control, that is unfortunate, but I leave him with nothing, and uh, I actually end up not even setting anything, because I want to drop Dark Arm next turn. This is my third Dark, so that is why I made that play too. If I could drop Dark Arm, clear the field, summon Fossil Dyna, um, and then set Oppression, set Solemn, that's basically game, right? Like, what is he going to do to that? So... He brain controls, tributes for Mobius. Might have been smarter to attack for 21 first in case I do play Gores, but takes the chance, passes, and now we're playing it exactly how we want to play it. My opponent's a little upset. I solemn the heavy, I want to keep the oppression, and that's 
that's gonna be it says well played appreciate that um all right so now the final game of the night last night was against Ogami Ito uh 1081 that's very high not sure where he's sitting on the, the ladder, but probably top 25, I want to say. If you guys are still watching this, thank you very, very much. I know it's Blackwing content for the most part, but uh, probably like 80%, right? But still, if you want to play Blackwings, maybe use this as a guide um, to see all the different options that you could, you know, think about during the games. Because many, many options and uh, a lot of, you know... Black Wings get that stigma of, you know, really good players could use them at a high level, but new players coming into Edison format could use them and play them very incorrectly and still just win with them, and Black Wings are that kind of deck. But I think if you operate them at a very high level, they are one of, if not the best deck in the format. I am not going to explain why I've done it in so many videos. BCS Championship Run, Blackwing, Masterclass, so so many videos. So my opponent sets one here. I'm going to set two, hoping that's a pro heavy. I'm sure it's not. It's actually a trap stun, and this is a crazy game one. So now, testing the waters, put some pressure on here. I set the Icarus. I feel good. There's an instant fusion. I still feel good. He summons Gale. I still feel good because I could Icarus right there and get all the cards off the field, but I'm like, I want him to make Black Rose. He thinks he's a good player. He's going to Black Rose and go plus his three cards for my four cards, when in reality, I'm going to Starlight Road. He's going to be tight. Boom. Trap stun. Gets the plus. He went first his five to hour four, but I feel like I'm way behind already. So I'm going to dust shoot. Now we can see the hand. Plague Master Kai Kai Stark Arm Scary with a Dark Engrave. I think Plague is the card to put back because that kind of shuts him down. What's he gonna do? Just like if he if I put this back, if I put a Kaius back, he still has a Kaius. Maybe if I put Zombie Master back, he still has a Plague, so he could always just stack it and then Kaius later, and then we pretty much lose, right? If I put this back, kind of tight, right? Kind of tight. If I can get the Zombie Master off the field, if I don't put anything on the field, he's not going to tribute Zombie Master to, like, set a Kaius. He's a good player. He's at 1,100 ELO. He's not going to go super minus. So I think the play is to put the Plague Spreader back, see if he wants to start attacking with Zombie Master, and he doesn't. So this is a Compulse. But regardless of what this is, because I don't want to show what this is, I, uh, even though I just did, <laughs> so I guess I do, um... Explain to them what's happening, please. I'm putting Shura on the field. I want to find out what that back row is. I'm doing that the hard way a lot these games. Um, and just taking the punishment. But he didn't put Zombie Master on the field, so I feel okay putting the pressure on. And he's at 53, so I could set Deep Prison. And I know that I'm close to Brain Mind Controlling, doing some stuff for games. So I took a shot. Take some shots. E-Teleport here. A very, very good card for him to draw. That's going to put a second Dark in the Grave. But it's not a zombie. He doesn't attack. He just removes the Shura. He does not attack. I set my legacy. I pass. He draws another Kremlins. Good card, but that would put four in the grave with no way of getting any of them out. So I'm going to deprison. He lets it go. He puts Krebins on the field. That's a scary card for me to see. Because I know now he could tribute for Caius. And uh, he'll have Dark Arm and such. So I'm looking for a nice card here. And we draw nothing. Why? You guys thought I was going to draw something crazy, right? But guess what? We still can. We have Legacy of Yada. I set this first thinking that this could be Dushu, and I don't want to lose the game that way. Right? So, take note of that. He had this card set for a while. I don't know if there was any point in time I had four cards in my hand after this card was set. So, I think there was when I summoned the Shura. But at this point in the game, I, for some reason didn't remember so I set this first then I legacy I draw solemn not great I set it I pass draws book of life he doesn't have anything in there so now he can go Kaius dark arm how aggressively does he want to play this Kaius dark arms only 52 and the brain control is gonna be pretty good he's thinking he's thinking he just swings he just swings now I draw Gale not great, not the best card, but a card that's good enough 
to get me to where I need to be life point wise. So I shouldn't say it's not good. It's actually perfect. It's perfect. Because I'm going to have this guy. I'm going to swing. He's going to think about it. He's going to pay eight. And now he's going to summon Zombie Master on his turn. Top decks instant fusion. Summons Zombie Master. I think about this. He had many, 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 many options here. <laughs> Could have tributed Krebins for Caius. If I saw him that puts four in the grave, then I feel like I'm balling, right? He's a something zombie master. Dude, I sound so nasally, dude. <laughs> Excuse me. Maybe so he could Book of Life. He has many options, right? Put four darks. Book of Life, the zombie master. Now he has three dark army. Insta fusion, Caius. He, he has crazy, crazy stuff he could do here. I'm not thinking about what he's going to do as much as I'm thinking about how I'm going to respond to it once he does it. Because I don't know that he has these two cards. I only know that he has Dark Arm Caius and Zombie Master. So I can't really... There's so many lines he could take. I shouldn't say I'm not thinking about what he's going to do. I am 100% thinking about what he's going to do the entire time. Trying to figure out how he's going to play and how I'm going to respond to it. I really thought he was just going to Caius so I could solemn it. But he doesn't. He summons Zombie Master. Good play. I let that go through. I pretend I have something to do. I don't. He doesn't want to put four darks in the grave to mirror force, even though he has a book of life. If I have oppression, then he's pretty tight, right? So I think about it. I know I'm letting it go through. What am I going to do? <laughs> think about it. Make him think about it for a second. So this is perfect for us, right? So he brings out Goyo, and that's going to be it, right? So we have brain control, and we have solemn judgment set. Alright, so we get out of there with a clean clean ending, but scary game. Very, very scary game. Here, game two. I'm taking a little bit longer because this one's a little more serious, I feel like. We don't know what this is. Could be Turtle, could be Goblin Zombie. We see it's Snow Man Eater. We don't know what the back row is, obviously. I'm going to lure here. I didn't have to. And you could say that's questionable. Because I do have two cards that work well together, Bora and Blizzard. Um, but I want to get this Deck Devi off so I could win the game, right? If I get Deck Devi off, I win, basically. So I'm going to try to start with that. I want to start with Shura, try to run over this Vayu, Make, Caddister. I might even set two, so if that is Dust Tornado, he has a 50-50. Um, if we resolve Deck Debbie, we basically win, right? So, and we have Dark Arm, like, we, we have a busted, busted hand. It's Snow Man Eater. I'm literally fine with that. Um, it looks like a, a big win for him right there, but because we have Blizzard Deck Debbie, we're just so good. So I'm going to set Deck Debbie. If he has Caius for it, that's unfortunate, but he doesn't. He just has Turtle, and I'm so happy with that. So I Blizzard, I bring back Shura. I'm like, this is so good. I'm actually going to mind control this here, because now we can get rid of the field um, entirely. Like, if this is Starlight Road, then our deck Debbie's gonna be... Actually, I guess it doesn't matter, right? Because I can Synchro here for Armed Wing, Armed Wing attack over this, and then deck Debbie. But I'm thinking I clear the field. Um, I mind control this. Yeah, I almost took this and made Caddister, but if I take this... And make armed wing. I attack this. If he chains, I deck Debbie. We definitely need armed. I guess armed wing or caddister. Yeah, there's a bunch of plays. And I also don't have to mind control here. I could just make the the six and not waste the mind control. And then I attack. Yeah, why did I mind control 100% here? Now, now I'm second guessing it. Now I'm second guessing it a little bit. It seems so clear last night to mind control. Ensure that the turtle's getting off the field. But the turtle's getting off the field regardless, right? He's letting all this go through. This is a dust tornado. So we could have dusted this, and he never did. He never did. So now we're clear. Now I feel like the game is over 100%. I set oppression. He does not dust it. He just ran. I think this was a big mistake. He randomly dust tornadoes and targets the deck Devi. And uh, 
The game's not over here because I do chain deck Davy and the Goblin Zombies in a die, but now he has a hand where if he instant fuses and I activate oppression, he could chain E teleport. This wasn't already face up on the field, so I can't pay eight again. And then he could actually get Krebens and sacrifice it for Caius. And then if he opts to leave oppression on the field, then I can't dark arm, right? Because I lock myself. Um So I have to let this go through. I have to think about this. And I have to let it go through. And it's unfortunate, but what are you going to do? I feel like I'm in a good spot with the oppression, and I know the rest of his hand. And there's really not a ton he could do. I top deck Mirror Force, which is amazing. I put my boar in the grave for three darks. Put Dark Arm on the field, set Mirror Force. I see top deck scores. That's fine. He teleports. He knew I had the oppression. It was a good read, but I had to play it that way. There's nothing else I really could have done, I think, because then I lock myself. I top deck Gale here, and knowing he has the gores, there's really no reason to put Gale on the field, because if I put Gale and then I attack with Gale, he drops the gores, and I do less damage, 1,500 less damage, because then I go Dark Arm attack one and pop the other one with dark arm effect if i go gale and i attack with dark arm then i still pop both with dark arm so there's no reason to put it on the field yet uh just swing for 28 i kind of force the gores out otherwise he's he doesn't have to do it right there but he pretty much has to do it right there and we know he has caius his last draw is going to be psychic commander and in his end phase i show him the gale and that's a nice 2-0 um Again, I guess I did not have to mind control. And that game should have went differently anyway, because he probably should have just dusted the deck Devi at the end phase. Um, and that would have changed the game a, a, a good amount, I think. Uh, not a ton, but definitely enough, because he lost two cards off of it, and I got all that information to figure out how to play. Because um, I definitely would have oppressed the instant fusion, and he probably would have just chained... E Telly, we and we probably would have went to game three if that had happened. Um Yeah, Blizzard Shura, make armed wing, attack. He only has one back row. If it's deep prison I chain deck Devi. If it's Starlight Road, then I attack one. I think I was worried about maybe trap stun, right? Because if I go attack one of them. And I'm like, alright, that went through. Now next turn, if I leave either monster on the field, then he can go draw Caius, remove Armed Wing, I chain Deck Devi, he chains Trap Stun. And Deck Devi doesn't resolve. So I wanted to get both monsters off the field so he couldn't Caius. That's why I did that. I knew there was a reason. I did not want to leave both monsters on the field, even though I was covered for... Uh, Deep Prison or Bottomless or Starlight Road. I was good in a lot of senses, but I was not good for leaving a monster on the field with Kai's and Trap Stun. That is the reason why. This was very, very long. Thank you very much if you watched any part of this. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something. Um, Tony Jackpot's on TikTok, the Poke Rapper on uh, Orio, on uh, any Yu Gi Oh! app <laughs> social media Yu-Gi-Oh stuff Ryle Pop Golden for music um, thank you guys very much for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one